Surprising how much power they get out of an engine that doesn't look so very big. Yes, about a thousand horsepower. In the four engines together? Oh, no. A thousand each. About four thousand or so, all told. Well, looks like I'm getting curious at the right time. You seem to know the answers. I'm an engineer. Automotive. An automobile engineer? Just the man I need. My name is Alan. Reynolds is mine. I don't want to bore you, but there's some things I'd like to ask you. Well, you won't bore me by talking about engines. You see, I'm a cartoon animation director. You mean you draw cartoon comedies for the movies? That's right. We're doing a cartoon with a bunch of little imps using an automobile to win a war. Everything is swell except we get in trouble whenever we try to show the engine. I'm on my way out to the coast for a vacation, so I ought to forget about engines. This cartoon stuff sounds interesting. I always wondered how they did it. Well, maybe we can dicker a bit. How about spending a day or two at the studio? That sounds okay to me. We've got a cutaway engine out there that might help you. Suppose I have it sent over to your place. That's fine. And when you come over to the studio, I'll show you what we've finished. <laughs> I think it's pretty clever the way you fellows combine cartoon figures with something that looks as real as that automobile. We've made tracing some photographs of a real car for those scenes. But when it came to the sequence inside the engine, we began to have troubles. I think the cutaway engine will help you there. It ought to be here by now. Well, let's go and see. These are the animators, the boys who make the original drawings. We want an army of imps making the engine go. Now you show us what they should be doing. Well... Let's have one of the little fellows on each valve. They could be in the special uniform of a mechanized unit. A great idea! Then we can make the imps' hats in the shape of valves, and then have them jump up and down. The action will make them open and close the chamber with their valve hats. That sounds good. Except this engine, that belongs in the car you're showing, has overhead valves. Notice that the valves are on top, and you have a direct flow of fuel mixture into the combustion chamber. Oh, well, then we'll put the imps up on top. And because the fuel comes directly into the head, that means greater economy. How about having an old miser imp in charge of doling out just the right amount? A stingy looking fellow with whiskers who just hates the idea of waste. That's okay. The valve mechanism is spatially designed for quiet operation, just like everything else in this engine. Why not have monitor imps walking around with quiet please signs? Say, hey, we'll make a cartoonist out of you yet. Oh, here's the way the valve imps will look. Ten or twelve drawings will be filled in between these two just for one complete movement. When they're all drawn, the action of your imps on the valves will be perfectly smooth and natural. Say, when we get to the place where the general calls for more speed, why don't we turn this thing into an airplane engine? Look, the imps go so fast they're just a blur. We fog out the shot and change to an airplane engine. It's a beaut. That gag is older than you are, fellow. Not bad, though. Remember what I was telling you on the plane, Alan? Aeroplanes have valve and head engines, too, because they want the greatest amount of power, the last possible ounce they can get, and fuel economy at the same time for long-range operation. As a matter of fact, all the engines that hold major speed records are this same valve and head construction. We have enough trouble making these drawings look like an automobile engine without asking for more. Let's get back to this one here. This engine has 90 horsepower for plenty of pep and performance. Why not have one of the imps in charge of the horses? Someone who could really handle them. What would you think of a Roman chariot driver? You're doing fine. We'll make him a big muscular guy with a whip. Okay? And this engine has quite an oiling system. Four distinct types of oiling, in fact, to meet the needs of different operating parts most efficiently and economically. So, some of the imps could be dressed like a crew of oilers, with little sprays and cans. Sounds all right to me. What's this space for? That's the water jacket. It runs around all the cylinders to cool them off. With the valves in the head, you have more room for cooling around the cylinders. That's where our Navy comes in. Imps! in submarines, maybe even mermaids. 
Well, what I want to know is how you get the sounds of the engine and voices to go with your pictures. That's easy. Let me show you. We use a regular actor whose voice fits the personality of the character we've created. In this film, the general of the imp army does most of the talking. Put on more speed! Give it to works! The voice is on film now, on the soundtrack. Put on more speed! Give it to works! We make a note of how much film is taken for every syllable. That is, how many frames or separate pictures. There are 16 frames to every foot of movie film. So if it takes 12 frames to complete a word or a piece of action, the animator knows he has 12 drawings to make. He uses his own lip movements as a guide when he draws a character speaking. Animators don't have to be crazy, but it helps. This is how the animators check the motion in their drawings before they're photographed. We have a timing device which gives our musical director his tempo. We photograph the drawings with a moving beater showing on the edge. We check our action and record the music to this tempo. This is the tracing and opaqueing department. In here, the drawings that have been checked are traced with ink on transparent celluloid. We call them cells. Then over here, the opaqueers fill in between the lines to give the character body and to block out the background. These are the backgrounds over here. Still more drawings. In fact, in a 10-minute animated cartoon, there are 15 to 20,000 separate drawings. Wow. I never realized it took that many. The cells are put together like an assembly line and they're photographed one by one over the backgrounds.